that Southpaw just, is just, like Wolf said, terminally online. He can't let anything go, and he ha he's just a gigantic fucking list. So he's just, he's this spiteful, vindictive little shit who's also a coward. They, uh, I, I'm pretty sure the EVA people would agree. It's saying that they should be oh, oh, oh! SK! SK! It's hard to adequately put into words how exactly everything that SK has outlined here affected me. In one sense, it seems just too absurd because it's entirely happening online. Nobody is talking face to face, and save for one or two individuals, everyone involved really only knows or refers to each other through their internet alias. Everything about this is confined to whenever I'm looking through my phone or at my computer. As long as I'm not on either of those things, there is absolutely no tangible effect that this has on me. Everyone in the real world knows me by my real name, and most people in my life don't even know about this persona I've built up on YouTube and social media. For all intents and purposes, none of this is real. My connection with these guys ran deeper than just a podcast host and a guest, or a YouTuber and a fan. We were friends, and we were quite close by the time that this all happened. I was sure to hear from each of them several times a week, oftentimes daily. Every interaction I had with them prior to all this was cordial and pleasant. And I was constantly watching and rewatching their content as I was going through a pretty rough period of my life. One that, by the time I felt more ready to socialize and try to get a move on with my life, we hit a pandemic, and it became much harder to meet people. Especially considering I live with two immunocompromised family members who were at greater risk than the average person with COVID. All of that stuff was happening in the background as I got closer and closer with these guys. Their takes on media resonated with me. We looked at movies and TV shows in a very similar way, and we got along really well overall. We just clicked, and in some ways I started seeing Mahler as like a surrogate older brother of sorts. Both of my brothers are significantly older than me, and married with kids and they're about a five hour drive away from where I live, so I don't get to keep up with them as often as I wish I could. But I was starting to hear from these guys every day, and every discussion that we had was pleasant and engaging and fruitful. All of this is just to say that my friendships with Mahler and Wolf and the rest of the people in their circle meant quite a lot to me. I didn't really want to rock the boat with them, and perhaps sometimes that translated to not challenging them enough on certain subjects or areas of disagreement, avoiding conflict if at all possible, and ultimately there was just no bad blood to be had between us, which was why I was hoping that when the terms of discourse around this one show were proving to be lopsided, and that it was clear that discussions about it were not going to be fruitful for whatever reason, the best way to avoid things from blowing up would be if we were to just end the watch parties and leave things be, agree to disagree. There were definitely parts of the watch party where I felt like they were being a bit relentless and kind of patronizing and hostile while I was trying to maintain a friendly atmosphere. Their attitude had made it such an unpleasant experience regardless of whether their arguments were sound or not. Pretty much everyone who's seen the initial watch party in full would agree that dealing with this sort of hostility long enough, especially if there's reason to believe that criticisms are being made in poor faith, would provoke just about anyone eventually. No one's ever really going to know what would have happened had I just been left alone regarding the decision to not continue watching the show with them. Had Mahler's friends been on the same page as him, that this was nothing to fret over at all and that everything was going to be fine. Well, we don't live in that world. After seeing months of the slander about me going totally uncontested, I'm being made out to be someone who just keeps dredging up old drama, reopening old wounds. I should just move on. Let everyone spread lies about my character and vilify me over the utterly senseless dissolution of multiple friendships that matter to me. And if I do decide to finally rebut this character assassination campaign against me, regardless of what I say or do, well, I'm the one causing drama. I can't even begin to tell you how sick I am of dealing with this, knowing what really happened, feeling its effects every single day. What I can tell you is just how bad it got after this call with Wolf had, for all I knew, forever slammed the door on any chances of me being heard or understood. I had been confused and hurt for months, but things really began to unravel for me after this call. Any hope of resolving this and communicating my actual reasons for going no contact for those three to four months had seemingly been dashed to the ground. 
Nothing was making any sense. I was working crazy amounts of overtime at work during the holidays. And I lost God knows how many hours of sleep as I tried to process why this once sweet escape from the mundanities and hardships of life had turned into what it became. Mentally, physically, and emotionally, I was pushed to my breaking point and I fell into a very ugly depressive state after this call took place. Now I'm seeing people cheering Wolf on for his blatantly disingenuous and abusive attitude during this call, in which he spent the entire duration of it just going for my jugular, twisting any knife that he could, and in turn, vindicating my initial decision to just go no contact with them. I wish I could have stood up for myself more, but speaking from past experience, I tend to freeze when I'm put into these sorts of situations. I prioritize remaining as calm as I can, not sinking to the level of the person hurling abuse at me, and just take it. As difficult as all this was to go through, I did not go through it alone. I had friends who provided a much needed support system, who witnessed everything as it played out, or learned of it sometime after the fact, who were able to listen to me and reassure me that I wasn't crazy, as much as I was being led to believe by some. I don't believe that I would have made it to today without them. There were times where I definitely felt tempted to just throw in the towel, but nowadays, I'm going to be okay. I have a group of friends I enjoy socializing with and talking about the usual stuff involving movies and TV shows. I'm gaining recognition at my job and will likely be going into management by the end of this year. And in a few months, I'll be getting a new dog, a corgi to be specific, and I'm preparing to shift my focus onto writing a series of books that I've been developing for many years. For all intents and purposes, I've landed on my feet. I don't know what all the future has in store for me, except that every day will have a new sunrise to gaze upon. Sometimes, that's all I really need. Um, I'm Southpaw's brother, um, and so I'm not an objective person in this conversation at any level, and I want to be very upfront about that. Um, I'm, on, I'm on Team Southpaw uh, all day, every day. Um, but also, but the reason why I'm here is South and I are close. We talk a lot. We've been in a close touch in the last couple of days. I've walked with Southpaw throughout this whole process. Um, and it's been painful. And I've gone through my own uh, difficult personal scenarios with gaslighting and uh, uh, dif difficult scenarios, I'll just say. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, seeing like truth come to light uh, or, or at least like slivers of it um, in, in a world where my expectation has been for a long time, like the truth is just never going to be out there, Southpaw, like <laughs> move on with your life. It's too convoluted. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you went to the, the work of, uh, of defending him and bringing uh, truth to light. Yeah. Um, no problem. Uh, uh, um, a, a lot of the uh, stuff in the video um I was familiar with. Um, I will say I hadn't heard the wolf call. Hearing the bullying itself, um, the dishonesty in that call um, was painful. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I, I, I would hope that even if anyone can't follow the whole timeline, <laughs> like is unclear on some of that, like imagine a close friend of yours talk to you that way. Like, have a heart here. This is a, like, I feel like any, any person with any EQ could listen to that call and tell that Southpaw is like attempting to stay calm, attempting to not escalate things, attempting to respond, um, by, uh, being shouted down and clearly in a lot of pain. Um, and I, I, I just think that's important to point out. I think any human with any politics can listen to the wolf call and their heart can break and they can see something bad has happened to Southpaw. Yeah. It's not just people are mean on Twitter. Um, like this is something very, very hurtful. The suicide excuse has been used hundreds of times on the internet and every time in a bullshit lie. Prove it, Southpaw. Prove that you were thinking of offing yourself. So <laughs> I'll be as nice as I can be to Music Quorum, which is a challenge for me uh, at a personal level. Um, and I'll say that um, it's it's not false that people do say I'm depressed, I'm suicidal as a way to garner sympathy. Like, yeah. do do people do that? Yes. I'll, that's 
fair. Um, suicide is a very, very serious thing to me. Um, yeah. And so uh, the, 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 the questioning, like the suspicion, the, well, Southpaw says this, I'm not sure if we can believe that. Maybe he's playing victim. Like, I, I respect the suspicion. The attitude of, like, for sure he's lying, I don't respect at all. We hit a point where Southpaw and I were talking on the phone about how depressed he was as a result of not the fact that people don't like his favorite show. I don't like Terriers either, <laughs> for what it's worth. So it's not, it's not my show. Um, I don't think I it's think objectively you just bad. That it has it's, it, it's, uh, it's not my show. Um, it, was, it wasn't that. It's like having friends betray you and lie about you um, is an extremely uh, hurtful thing. Um, and South Paulo was very depressed about it. This call with Wolf was that call with Wolf, by the way, was about thirteen or so, maybe fifteen days before that. Um, before this happened, that's 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 good to know for me that that the, the, the timing of that call on this day, um, South Park confided to me um, that he was having suicidal thoughts. We basically what we wound up doing uh, was South Park agreed to give his weapons to uh, to a friend to hold on to. Uh, until I until I thought that it was okay for him to have them back um, out of uh, out Southpaw, of an, you have a backlash? out of an abundance of precaution. What's that? No backlash, Southpaw. A what? A backlash. Your I weapons. Didn't say, I didn't say battle axe. Yeah, the, the, well, the, just, it, just, yeah. It, it might not seem like they're people because it's the internet, but there's people behind those Twitter profiles that you're being horrible to. <laughs> I should go ahead and get going. I've been uh, uh, neglecting my my wife and daughter for uh, for about two hours now. Um, um, but well, we'll talk with you guys. Bye, yeah, dude. Likewise. Yeah, I yeah, really like you. Really like you. You accuse them of gaslighting. Uh, Do you yeah, understand why they, they might be upset by that accusation? Uh, okay, so if you accuse, if you tell someone that they uh, that they got really angry in a call with you, and they demonstrably did not get really angry in a call with you, but you convince them that they did, you did gaslight them. You used yeah, whatever control you had what in happened. the situation, which in this case was self police trust, and they used that against them. I, I like even if this was accidental. You still convince, like you still planted a false memory in someone's head. And you so I don't really apologize. care if you get. I don't really care if you get offended over the use of the word gaslighting, which again, we even accepted it could have been entirely accidental, especially if the person that you've done this to has even acknowledged that it, it may not have been intentional, right? Um, I feel would like you, would you, you should... Would you describe it as an overly harsh word to use for what happened with a connotation that he had good reason to be upset over? You are talking about Absolutely overly not. harsh and he defending the friendly no messages. He had no intention to be upset over. He had no. no good intention to be upset over. Especially because, like, if you actually watch the three-hour uh, watch party, I'm not getting angry with them at all. I might not be agreeing with them all the time, but I'm doing it rather politely. And these are guys uh, who yes. can disagree rather uh angrily sometimes with each other but i'm being quite calm and civil and polite in this and yet they're acting as if i fucking got really angry with them because i wasn't agreeing with them constantly they're fragile SK, little bitches can I, can I ask you to can i ask you to bring up the video and go to the thir three hour 14 minute 57 mark why you do it yourself i am assuming that you are now angry about this and so now you have recontextualized your own words and your own thoughts. And why do you think why do you think we got angry why, over it over why time? would we be what why would we be angry Give about this wild over time? stab in the dark. why did we why did we why did we not talk like do this video a year earlier why did we wait a year and what three months a year and about four months before we decided to talk about this why did we take a year and four months to do this if we weren't trying to give them a chance to handle this themselves like adults i guess i'm not convinced anybody is in the right here what no that does not what he is in the right <sighs> all right so you, you said just, you, that, that you literally just tried to say that Mueller did yeah. the best thing yeah. he could what have are you done talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you're fucking kidding me no that doesn't mean that i think no. he's in the right he did the he what? did the cow. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. His approach was cowardly. And Trying pathetic. to just ignore this and sweep this under the rug. It's a cowardly thing to do, especially, especially after you accidentally spread misinformation. If you're a good person and you've accidentally spread misinformation and you are corrected on that and you are made aware of that and you realize that and you accept that, 
What's the right thing to do? Sweep it under the rug or do what you can to salvage your old friend's reputation that you unfairly slandered? What's the moral thing to do? What's the heroic thing to do? Would Spider-Man just sweep this shit under the rug? Would Superman do that? Is that what the superhero thing to do is? No. So then their fans are going well, to look at what they said and go, oh yeah, Southpaw, he just stopped talking to them because they didn't like his favorite TV show. Because that's obviously a thing that Southpaw does here, right? He just stops talking to people because they disagree with him once on something. Even knowing that the two of you were good friends at the time, Mm -hmm. And that he held no ill will towards you, and that he didn't have any problems with you at all. In fact, he he held you in very positive light. Under you still summer. maintain that it is that it is more likely that the gaslight was intentional than unintentional. Yes, so after everything case, happened. Was, uh, I, I, I would say I, mean, I would say one. um that makes it kind of shitty if it was unintentional, and I guess they just don't feel bad enough to try to do anything about it after they're corrected on it after I've even extended them several olive branches to suggest that this wasn't, like, because they're shitty people, that this was unintentional. Like, you get extended that many olive branches and you're still not going to do fucking anything? Do you not think that that speaks to well, a person's character, morally speaking? Considering Wolf's conduct in that call um, and his conduct since, I am, I am not convinced that he's not abusive. The, the, the idea that this was done for some other reason besides he's abusive, it's becoming less and less believable by the day. I'm willing to accept that this was unintentional. Um, however, everything that he did afterwards indicates, yeah, he's gotten abused personality. Do you think that it is remotely reasonable for him to be upset at your characterization of gaslighting if in his mind gaslighting is always an intentional action? No, because it's wrong. It's an, it's an assumption that he's going off of because he's highly emotional, probably. Like, that, like the best faith uh, interpretation is he gets highly emotional over this, and then he makes an assumption, and then he just lets that assumption fester without ever trying to get any form of clarification. And then, even after he's given clarification, he does fuck all to change, to, to fix any of the damage that he caused deliberately. You don't enter into a call with someone with his attitude that he had in the January call that SK then broke down in his video without having the intention to hurt someone. I did like my intention to hurt them. I'm, I'm, I'm really wondering where I had the intention to hurt them. Whereas Wolf absolutely had the intention to be a verbally abusive piece of shit. When he got into that call, that was his mindset. Hey everyone. How is <laughs> everybody doing? How's everybody Hello. Doing? Doing great. Yeah, After that going. intro, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm chill. I'm, I'm ready for the night. You know, I'm I'll give you a ten minute intro next time. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm always stoked when uh, I see the Hoff, bro. I, I think we need you're more ready to like <laughs> bore the tears out of like all the chuds that are going to be like watching this because they know that SK and I are here, and you need to like. Oh really yeah, make guilt them... by association time. They, they need to oh, really, nice. need, they, they really need to work to, uh, to be able to comment on this. I, where do you guys oh, yeah. want to go next? I have a super cut of the worst of uh, EFAP, or we can go straight into talking about the video. Where, where would you guys like to go? That, and I was like, oh, let me know if at any point you want to pause. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think that gender and sex are inextricably linked. I do think that both of the genders, while there are two, there is in a vast spectrum, but I don't really care about it all that much, honestly. If you want to be a whatever, that's fine with me. If you want to be whatever gender you want, that is totally fine with me. You do your thing. You go out there and be the best whatever you want to be. That is totally okay with me. Um, just don't tell me that I have to call you certain things or mm. I have to label you as something or something. Okay. The top comment well, can we, was... Can we, can we stop there? Can we yeah. stop there? Mm -hmm. I want to just say exactly what he said, but replace mm -hmm. a few words. You can be whoever you know, whoever you are, whatever skin color, whatever, whatever uh, nationality, you know, whatever. Just don't tell me I have to not call you certain things like Negro or stuff like that. Um, yeah. Just don't mm -hmm. tell me I have to uh, uh, respect, like, let you sit at the same uh, lunch table as people of mm -hmm. other skin colors um, or the same water fountain, whatever. That's what you sound like. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Swallow I, I, a bullet. I, not that misgendering trans mm -hmm. people should 100% be considered inciting hatred against them on the basis of their gender. The only purpose in misgendering trans people is that it hurts them and incites hatred yep. against them. That's Riley, a lot of people are going to look at you and say, hey, it's a guy because you look like a guy. You have the body mm -hmm. of a guy. You have the voice of a guy. She the doesn't. DNA in every single cell of your body is male. You can call yourself whatever you want, I don't care. But once you start telling other people that they have to call you certain things, that is obviously where they draw the line. Okay, pause again. I just gotta say one asshole. One. Right? What, yeah. a, piece of shit. what a fucking prick. <laughs> um, so from now on, I'm just gonna. Uh, Rags is just gonna be called shit mouth to me. Uh, and, and nothing. <laughs> You know, well, is ever going to change? It's that. just, it's just like no. Just, okay, just yeah, find out, find you. out what his real name is. Find out what his real name is, and then just refer to him as his real name, and never call him Rags. What? What do you mean, Lawrence? Like, obviously, we're allowed. Oh, we're, okay. we're, we're, we're obviously Lawrence allowed. Angle? Tanner Angle. Tanner, that's <laughs> his real name. We're obviously. Uh, Southpaw, did you notice this stuff at the time and dismiss it, and just kind of, uh, you know, let it go with the greater context of the length of their videos, <laughs> or? My, my, uh, so my experience has been that, um, upon everything that happened that SK outlined in his video that we'll talk about later, um, it forced me to look back on a lot of things that happened. And this is an experience that you might have with friends who you, uh, you, you have like a fondness for. But then something happens and it kind of forces you to reevaluate certain things. And you start noticing things that were kind of staring you in the face the whole time that you kind of just glossed over because they were your friend. There are hints. Um, yeah. yeah, that's kind of what happened here where like it was a and in, in some cases it could even be a matter of I I turned a blind eye to genuinely shady behavior. You two guys are not very well liked in that community, but because SK and no, I are well liked in really? that community. <laughs> but because SK and I aren't well liked in that community either, and we understand that the reasons why are pretty crappy, we then look at this and it's like, I kind of want to talk to these two now and actually get their perspective because these are not reputable sources, the, the community that is, on why these are bad people. And like my first impression of organized chaos wasn't great. It was the Doctor Strange 2 response. And I don't I think there's a lot of problems with that response stream. At the same time, it's like, well, I don't think that this is a person who's incapable of having a good faith discussion um <laughs> well, the the word incapable of course will might come up later um mm. depends on how long we go for we could honestly go on for 12 hours i, I could go on for 12 hours at least <laughs> i cannot but uh yeah. Yeah, i uh -huh. got an hour in me but I, yeah <laughs> I, I will i will respect your boundaries and and, and I'm, I'm willing to do a follow-up if if we have to that's fine the narrative changed from SK and I said that this was victim blaming, which is true, by the way. You can argue with me all you want, argue with a fucking wall. I'm right, you're wrong, but I we we still refuse to call this ra victim. Uh, sorry, rape apology. Now maybe SK thinks differently. Now I don't know what that is. I'm not SK. I'm associated with him. I'm not him. He can have a different opinion on this than me. But the whole point was we said at the time. Not rape apology, just ignorant. And yes, this rhetoric is victim blaming. Um, and they they changed that from you called it victim blaming to you referred to them as rape apologists. It's like so they're straw manning us and they're just lying about us. They're not providing. I, I'm like literally to anyone that's saying that we did that. Just provide one receipt. Just one receipt of me saying that. Not the thing with Wolf gaslighting me into thinking I said that. Get the screenshot. Hey, Wolf, if you're listening to this, provide the screenshot or the recording that you supposedly have of me saying that. Prove that I actually ever called you rape apologist because that never happened. Um, and then, but but you're looking at this as like, you guys still said something fucking abhorrent, even if it was ignorant. And it's like, this could have been so, this could have been a non-issue if you just realized you fucked up and apologized and then we would have moved on but you haven't done that instead your fan base has gone on to push this narrative about us that we're the only ones burdened with having to push back on um and you guys have the power to go that's not what they said that's not what they ever said no we don't like them no yeah they're they're saying a bunch of shit about us that we don't like but that is definitely not what they said you have the power to do that you can't do that you're incapable of doing that. 
if your bread and butter is criticizing other people um, and you do it in kind of a mean spirited way, uh, in, a, in a patronizing way, but then as soon as your ass is on the chopping block, you've said something that that is now being uh, placed under a microscope. Um, as soon as you start lashing out, that's kind of an indication to me that you're not really in this for criticism. You're in this to, to heckle people, basically. Um, and that's why you're not liking it when it's you who's on the chopping block. Is It's because you're kind of aware that this isn't about actual like intellectually honest criticism. This is just a means to belittle people and you don't like the feeling of being belittled yourself going over the, uh, the, the, the criticisms of Terry's that they decided to, to go into, right. Where it's like all of these criticisms, and I mean, all of them are rooted in like absurd inaccuracies, inaccuracies in terms of like how things work in the real world, but also like they're having to omit context or distort context in order to have it line up with what they're saying. And so um, what's what's interesting to me here is that's always been my contention with their criticisms. That's what I say in my thread where I'm like, I just, I think that their criticisms are wrong here. Um, but the narrative has been that I just, I couldn't take that they were criticizing the show period in that, um, well, they, they will, cite the decision to stop watching the show with them right but it's like if you look at what's actually in the messages there there's a discussion being had um where we're exploring perspectives but what's happening when i'm i'm giving Mauler mine is he's being a pig-headed prick um I, I'm, I'm just gonna uh be totally blunt there um and it's quite clear that he's not going to have a conversation uh in good faith uh, or uh, even I, sorry, sorry, so, well, if I might cut in, um, yeah, I just want to avoid the stream being turned into uh, a <laughs> yeah. rant about yeah, yeah, yeah. Eve, Apple, Rob Mola, or about because yeah, uh, I know you can go on to the sacred cows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's several points in the watch party where they are being rather smug and aggressive while I'm uh, just asking questions and I'm I'm letting them talk. I'm not arguing uh, very aggressively with them or anything. Um, there's a lot of parts where I'm just quiet, but it's like a lot of their fans have assumed, oh, you're, you're, you're pissed off. You're being passive aggressive. It's like, oh, that's definitely a way to interpret that. But like over TV show. every, every documented exchange is clearly showing, uh, like an entirely different picture than what they're trying to paint. So, um, uh, long story short, um, there's a totally bizarre narrative that's started over this, um, and now SK and I are kind of done talking about just that um, and talking about the gaslighting that happened as a result. Now we're just focused on the references. We're just focusing on the criticisms of the TV show. Uh, the reason I call them subhuman is because they're bigoted. They actively allow bigot bigots on their platform. Uh, they have it in their content unapologetically and uh do i oh, even need uh, to mention I what mean, they did with the whole terriers southpaw thing and didn't properly uh, uh mend things afterwards making fun of someone for feeling suicidal uh i think that 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 breaks the subhuman threshold for me yeah i was like yeah you're just you're just an unrepentant cunt yeah you're just, you're just an evil person um yeah. Which is like it doesn't help when uh, we're we're listening to them doing this moral grandstanding about the show in which they're taking it out of context. Kind of bad, kind of bad. If uh, if if um, as they're complaining, like all oh, these characters are such bad people, is like okay, can we talk about your audience? So, for instance, when I say gaslighting, I have to have a pretty wordy explanation of what gaslighting is. Um, it's like I'm not saying. That they uh, that they had some malicious intent to drive me crazy. Um, however, gaslighting is a thing that narcissists have a tendency to do at a subconscious level when they're defending themselves. I want to talk about EFAP's worth as critics and <coughs> whether they misrepresented a uh, a TV show. Um, like, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> Like, you know, there's obviously issues with them playing footsie with the far right. There's 
obviously, uh, you know, issues there and, 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 and whatnot. Well, this is the thing, right? Like people like Zod, um, people like Zod should know that this happened. And these guys have refused to own up to it or apologize for it. And Zod continues to swear. It's like, fuck you. Okay. Yeah. Just fuck you at this point. Like, um, straight up. It's like, not... you see, you, you see like people turn out to be Nazis or, or whatever. And you're just like, yeah, no, that's fine. I'm still going to praise their shit. Nothing happened. I don't like the public nature of the whole thing, and I feel it should have stayed private from day one. But it's no, 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 no. If you stay, pri if you stay private, they'll just get away with it. We're showing the ways in which they caused this thing to blow up, uh, very unjustly. And then when SK went out of his way to talk to them, the best that we got was, "I'm sorry, this happened." And this is why a lot no, of people sorry say that result, you felt right? it happened. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, a lot of people are, including T TMR. TMR was like, oh, this is resolved because he said, I'm sorry this happened. Um, no. So, if you believe, if you truly believe this, you have failed a rather important litmus test for narcissism. SK and I have been trying to just talk about the references. And curiously enough, uh, people just want to talk about the drama. We're taking you to task because you unfairly denigrated a a well written piece of art. Um, you did it to defame a friend. Uh, you failed to take any responsibility for your fuck up or to correct yourself. Um, like critical thinking is just it's left the building at this point. My whole thing has been about uh, if you're criticizing shit inaccurately, and it's something that I, uh, one, know about, two, uh, am passionate enough about, uh, I'm going to hold you accountable to it if I've uh, decided to focus my sights on you. Fucking hell. SK right here has been on the receiving end of this. Mm -hmm. Because literally when I first started talking to him, he did, this, he did the same treatment to Into the Spider-Verse, right? Now, right. here's the thing. Um, this thing with ETAP is a little bit different because... Uh, I wasn't friends with Ren's Reviews when he did the Mission Impossible video. I wasn't friends with SK when he did the Spider-Verse video. And those things resolved fairly quickly. This did not. Uh, this was my friends doing this. The way that they acted was bullshit from start to finish. Um, what they did was essentially a betrayal uh, of their principles. That's how I describe it. Um, and I will stand by that until the day I die or until they can uh, finally just take the L and do anything to try to actually undo the damage that they chose to do. I am in a strange position because I've, I've praised the show up and down and now EFAP have gone on and they've ripped into it and they've ripped into it with inaccurate references. Now, at this point, I might have initially conceded like, okay, maybe you're right. But then I've gone back and I've, I've engaged with their art. This is the thing, right? This happens because I engaged with their arguments. Okay. I go right. through the rest of the show with their arguments in mind and I'm seeing problems. I, I'm now in a position where it's like, so am I expected to just go on stream? The Terriers thing is going to be brought up. That, that will be brought up. Um, it's an elephant in the room. They're probably going to bring it up themselves, or a chat member will bring it up, or a super chat will bring it up, right? Um, yeah. So what, what am I supposed to do here? Because I don't agree with the criticisms, and I have reasons, very good reasons, based on references yeah. as to why I don't agree with them. So do I pick a fight with them on stream? Do I lie and go like, oh yeah, they were totally right. Interiors are shit. And I just have to like concede and oh, my name is Reek, you know? Um, I don't think I need to do that either. So the, the tweet thread um, was, was my way of trying to like do, like handle this outside of a stream, not pick a fight with them on stream, make it clear where I stand and make that public while also treating them with, like, incredible kid gloves. Someone just so, said, um, uh, can y'all not just get on the call with Mahler and Fringy and hash this out? We would, by now, if they... We would love if, to. If they were willing to. <laughs> We'd love to. I, like, I, I, I would you know even... What? So this I, is the thing, no, right? No, 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 like... no, me first, me first. Uh, if you are in the Discord Far Far Away server where Mahler and Fringy are there, uh, link this and tag them. 
You, you know, like here, here's the thing, right? So I don't, I don't love the concept of tip for tap apologies. Um, but here's the thing when people are, are being like, you shared their DMS, it's like, they did way worse. I'm not apologizing for, for that until I get a, like a sincere apology for those other things. Um, you, I mean, you publicized it it without saying it's like, I'm not apologizing for that either because like, we're correct. Like you have to argue that we were incorrect first. Yeah. Um, but like, if they, like, if they're personally offended by that, um, I, I might, this is the thing, right? Is like, so this is just sort of like social intelligence 101. Um, you might be more inclined to apologize for personally offending someone if they are at least apologetic to you. You have to meet me halfway. And I'm so sorry, but they drew first blood. So right fucking there, three months into this, um, I'm giving them a chance. <laughs> no one ever gave me a chance. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm giving them a chance to like, to help me hash this out with them and they refuse. And then that wolf call happens a few days after that. And let me just tell you, like wolf did unreal damage, um, to their chances. Um, after that, um, that's on wolf. Um, like I, 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 I am so not entertaining blame, like, like, like the idea of, of getting blamed for that when it's like, after that call with Wolf, uh, they were not entitled to jack shit from me. Um, like, it, it's abhorrent treatment. Uh, you see Rags referring to this as, oh, yeah, for a sacred cow, for a self proclaimed sacred cow slayer, he sure does love that sacred cow. Um, it's like these guys are just saying this shit publicly, and they're doing this like minutes after I posted this thread. This is like, yeah, this is like you guys are like the wettest paper tigers I've ever seen. Like, I don't know if it's paper tiger. It might be more like just a, uh, it's throwing stones in a glass house. It would be one thing if EFAP conceded and they are like, we take the L we lost. Um, they haven't done that. Their fans are still like, be like, Oh yeah, it's just a shitty show. Is there a path to redemption for them? Absolutely. Um, sure. they're going to have like, they would have to work for it though. Um, like first and foremost, a retraction of the criticisms is in order. And that's a start. Cause here's the thing. Um, a few years ago, I fucking hated Jack Saints guts. Um, you know what, uh, what, what, what you know, what's going on now though, is I'm mutuals with Jack Saint. Now we aren't close acquaintances. We don't message each other all the time, but like I spoke to him back and forth a little bit after the last of us show was done and found myself in like having some pretty common ground with them. Um, I, I got when I, when I got ratioed to hell and back over that that clip. Um, Jack privately agreed with me. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but like you know, um, Jack Make Saints more pri private messages. Yeah. Classic well, the shit that Wolf said in the call, uh, public apology. Um, he needs to like show his face, uh, like, not not literally show his show face, his but he needs face. to actually. <laughs> He needs to he needs to get into a public call and be like, I am so fucking sorry. It's unreal. And it can't be, I'm sorry this happened. It's I'm sorry I did this to you. Shortly after SK's video uh was released, uh was uploaded, I had a stroke. Um, I'm not kidding. Um Man, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh yeah, like terrible. maybe maybe you haven't heard of it, but what happened was um I had what seemed like a vertigo attack at work. Um, and I, I went home, um, and then, uh, I slept it off and I was okay the next day. And then the day after that, uh, I was dealing with dizziness again and I couldn't walk straight. I couldn't balance. I couldn't stay up. And then, um, I went to the hospital. Um, I was taken there thinking that maybe I had a uh, COVID. Um, and then they did a cat scan on me and found out that I had bleeding in my cerebellum yeah, because I had had a stroke. And then I was in the neuro ICU for, uh, for a week. Now, a few days after this happens, um, I, I post about it on Twitter. Brown table, uh, liked it or, or <clears throat> it, I think, um, cause I've also spoken with him in private. As hard as all this shit is, I'm like, if I really fucked up and I feel really bad about it and someone just went to the hospital, what is a better way to like make it clear that you're the good guy than to like, even though uh SK and I just made this video, right? Um, mm -hmm. to like go like, hey dude, 
I heard that you're in the hospital. Uh, I know that things have ended really badly with us. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, I feel kind of guilty. You know what I mean? Um, but that's not what happened. I, I'm not just going to slaughter your sacred cow. I'm not just going to cut its throat. You're going to cook it? I am going to... I'm going to make a cheeseburger it. out of it. I'm going to chop it in half, and then I'm going to feed the top half while it's still alive and screaming <laughs> live into a meat grinder. And then <laughs> I'm going to go through the bottom half. I'm going to rip it to shreds. I'm going to find where the steak is, though. All right. I mean, I get a nice fucking ribeye steak out of the sacred cow. And then I'm going to fuck it. I'm going to just <laughs> hump it. Okay. I'm going to do it right in front of you. That's what I'm going to do to your, and then I'm going to find the calf that it had. Oh, and I'm, no. going, I'm going, I'm going to boil it alive in its Hold mother's milk. <laughs> That's what I'm doing to your sacred cow. Something changed along the way. Um, and I really hate that because that doesn't seem to describe the Mueller that I knew. And people want to say, oh, well, he was your friend. It's like this guy that's on EFAP right now that's hosting it. He was never my friend. That's never the Mauler that I thought I knew. Um, again, something changed along the way. It's like um, it's like seeing a a someone that you used to be friends with, and it's like this dude is just a shell of his former self, and he's he's been possessed by someone who is just completely at odds with what he used to be. And you look, you look at it kind of in pity because there was a guy in there at one point who was principled and honest um, and believed you should hold him accountable when he makes mistakes. And now he's just, unrecognizable I, I was talking to jolly just like it's just so funny how like every time i just we talk about this and i'm talking about this in the most like calm collected manner possible and i'm just like making fun of how awful these arguments were and they're like oh he's just throwing another fucking piss fit it's like jesus dude i mean <laughs> like it, i'm getting just mad like, over a youtube show yeah <laughs> I, I hate to like do this this armchair FBI handwriting analysis thing, right? Where like like the FBI will will have someone who like looks at like a ransom note and will be able to determine, or just some note in general and be able to determine like was this written with a cool hand? Was this like written in a rush? That sort of thing. I look at this and it's like this is clearly written by someone who was butthurt. This is written <laughs> by someone who is like just <laughs> defensive and enraged. And is not thinking straight because they really want to defend themselves here. It's like, well, this let's, you know, let's, let's try and be as, uh, let's, it's you know, let's, try and be as fair as, let's try and be as fair as possible, right? Like, oh, we have no idea if this is true. Like, I'm, I don't want to armchair psychology, you know, uh, play armchair psychologist, sorry, um, mm -hmm. with a bingo card. I will just say, however, that like, regardless of the motivations, this thing is just objectively not very well put together. People run the fuck away when it's reference time. It is reference time right fucking now. Get on here. Yep. Come on in, Mauler. It's I'm not going to fight you. We're, we're not running. Much. We're, we're, we're right here. We're right here. We are. Come and fucking here, hit me. Like, and you've, like, run, really, you've run this whole time. You've run for four, a third of a fucking year you've been running from when it was reference time. Year and a half. Year and a half. <laughs> year and a half. Year and a half. Then it's not even the guy who did it. It's just a Randy who's connected, sure. But like, he's just like, oh, God. And, like, this guy is beaten to fuck, and of course he's pressing charges. Thank fuck the show managed to pull through on that. And our wonderful main character is like, Oh man, I'm probably gonna go to prison for like a whole year. As you should, yeah. A year. A <laughs> year. A whole year. For you're lucky. Man. You are so lucky that you're only getting a year. I hate this. I hate these people, dude. Oh. Um, oh. from the bottom of my heart. Fuck you. <laughs> oh. Mad over a TV show. Petty year old drama. That's what they'll call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you <laughs> lied about a piece of art. Yeah, you, you lied. You lied about lied someone's art. <laughs> you did it to slander me. Um, you are a 
you are a morally bankrupt piece of shit. Because we've already got more than enough evidence of these people being just clowns. You get your comments removed if you're not even going to address what we say. You, so here's the thing, right? It gets to, even if you're just dumb, even if what you say as a counter is bad, we're, we're still going to leave that up. If what you say is yeah. not remotely related to the arguments, you're, it's getting deleted. If it's an ad hominem, if it's, oh, you're still on about this. Oh, you go to therapy, Southpaw. Oh, why are you so focused? Deleted. Yeah. You're we're going. not even keeping it up. Like, we're just, we're done. We've seen, we've seen so we've much seen of it. it like, all. we're going to screenshot it. We're going to screenshot it. We'll have a doc. We'll have a document because <laughs> SK, you're going to, you're going to deal with this in the video, right? Yeah. It's just showing all those. Yeah. I, I, here's the thing. So, um, I am a person. I'm a human being. I, I don't have a soul. I don't believe in souls, but I have feelings, okay? Um, uh, it kind of sucks having to see all the shit that people say about me. And with SK, I mean, it may suck a little bit for him because I'm his friend and everything, but there's a degree of separation there that makes it different from if I were to just be looking at that constantly. I'm protecting myself. It's the same reason why I had SK work on his video was because he's more suited to to talk about that than me. It couldn't be me. Um, he's still going to be collaborating on this. Um, he's going to be talking, he's going to definitely be like pulling that up. He's, he's my receipts guy. Mm -hmm. He's my receipts of all the, the shitty things that EFF fans have said. Um, because I'm not saving that to my computer. Fuck that. Um, because it does bother me. It like, it, it, it does get to me. Um, like I, I, I have feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not unwilling to admit that like, yeah, this, hurts, this hurts to read other people say about me all the fucking time over bullshit. Um, Three hugs for Southpaw. I'm so sorry, Southpaw. I'm not trying to like get pity. I just want to be clear. I'm just like, yeah, I can't, I can't sift through the comment section on SK's video, um, or thread it. A cringe uh, but I mean, SK, it's like, genuinely speaking, e audience can all go fuck themselves. The worst. The other guys, the duplicitous things to try build a parking lot. Like, <laughs> they literally kill people. They literally murder people! <laughs> Fucking Christ! So I'm actually seething now. <laughs> I'm actually really mad. I'm actually really mad. Over a TV show. That music quorum guy he like oh, commented saying that like I Yeah, well he commented on that one like on, on one video of theirs or something claiming that like I I was like part of some mass flagging campaign against them or something, right? <laughs> uh, I want to. I guess. The, I guess this is just the new lie that EFAP fans are making up. So, a long, long time ago, uh, EFAP L's was rallying people to report EFAP's content for breaking terms of service, which they did, um, by the way. And, and someone, there's proof of that. <laughs> and someone, someone said that that was harassment. Um, and all that I did was I said, it's not harassment to call for people to flag content that's breaking the terms of service. Yeah, um, I supported so, it. I said, yeah, based. Go do it. Um, <laughs> but I, Southpaw didn't care enough. Uh, all he cared about was, like, the harassment claims. Like, yeah, this is the thing. is like, I, uh, I, I'm a, I, I see myself as a critic. I, I, I criticize things. Um, and... Uh, I, I'm personally fine with criticizing EFAP for what they do. Um, I don't think that flagging them is going to do anything. I think it's a waste of time. I don't think it's harassment. However, um, if people want to flag them, um, I think it's stupid, uh, on a personal level. Uh, I think it's a waste of time. Um, I would much rather, uh, I guess like what, 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 what would be a good way for me to like a good, a good analogy for this because like, uh, I'm, I'm much more fine with like just criticizing what EFAP does rather than try to run them off of the internet. If you're a fan of EFAP as they are, uh, I don't think you have a leg to stand on to complain about harassment. Yeah. Um, really this whole getting, getting, getting flagged, um, for breaking terms of service um sorry efap getting flagged for breaking terms of service uh from where i'm from we call that fucking around and finding out um 
but that doesn't mean that I actually support it. It just means like, yeah, I mean, you play stupid games, you might win a stupid prize. If Mueller was watching this and offered to get in the call right now to debate Civil War, I'd have it with him. I'm tired, but I would do it. <laughs> I would do it, yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Come on in, buddy. You can get us at our I weakest. I won't I've come I won't even bargain. talk about what it I won't even talk about what a big dishonest piece of shit you are in general. I'll just I'll just talk purely about the movie. Is Mueller incapable of having a good take? I wouldn't say that he's incapable. Um I'd say that like I mean, but here's the thing. Um I kind of highlight this in my my video. What he's got the best takes on are like the lowest hanging fruit. The obvious things like I'm not going to fight and him I, on Kenobi or or Quantumania or and that's yeah. Literally what I was gonna say, like I, I know I've watched the Kenobi one and I didn't see anything like that. It seemed like they were being uh, extremely good fit. I, again, I might be kind of biased. And then um, I did also just watch the uh, uh, I can't remember. Oh, your movie sucks, guy. Um, where they were kind of going through critical trinker thing, and I, I thought they seemed exceptionally um, fair with them. Like it, it with that many people, it could have been like a dog pile. It didn't seem like it came off that way. It seemed like they were actually being like quite cordial and kind of walking through. So I didn't see like the same type of thing, and it seemed like they wanted to provide context and everything. I've, so I don't know that. I was just wondering if this is one off, if this was different, because um, I hadn't noticed it, but I could definitely be. So well, I know I've enjoyed it, but I hadn't uh, put like a fine tooth comb over it or anything like now that. Now I've heard the opposite regarding when YMS went on uh, on EFAP. What I what really? I was told by hmm. both Evan um, and a couple others was because because when I when I said to this fellow yesterday, I said. Um, um, he's not good at what he says. Mueller is not good at what he sets up to do as a critic, or at least he's just not consistent at all and refuses to stick with things he's actually passionate about. He doesn't argue in good faith. He's just a pseudo intellectual debate, bro. He wasn't ever really my friend because what he did is not how anyone treats a true friend. And he's just an all around awful person. He treats debates as a blood sport rather than honest discussions. Now I realize that's very, very harsh. What I just said, I stand by all of it. Um, and you'll see why in my video, um, but when I said he treats the debates as a blood sport rather than honest discussions, the guy that I said this to says the YMS EFAP was literally this statement. So maybe go, really? maybe, maybe I, go back. I guess. Yeah, I might need to revisit it. But I I took it as um, he was really like willing to kind of walk through. Um, I, I keep forgetting his name. Did you say it was Evan? Uh, YMS's uh, kind of arguments as to why he uh, didn't think that a critical drinker was... Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Well, the uh, I, I guess, the description uh, was that Mueller just sorry, go right ahead. The, the, the description that I got was that Mueller just kept on going on mm -hmm. and on with questions to crack Adam to say something contradictory and would use that to try to have an aha, I got you now. But that didn't happen at all and left just awkward mm -hmm. slash painful to sit through. Now, full disclosure, I haven't watched this EFAP, mm -hmm. right? I don't, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. follow these guys. Fair enough. I, I could definitely see. Yeah, exactly. I, I could definitely see that. I don't really wish to. Um, um, I know you said that you want to kind of like move on from talking about about. Uh, Dan and Bob, um, or like not have to focus on the for sure. Tonight. We've got some, yeah, fun content planned. Kind of like, uh, you it sounds like you, you know, you have your Batman one next, mm -hmm. and then I'm, I'm sure you're even thinking of content Civil after War, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want, yeah, to, for sure. I it's... don't want to be the anti EFAP guy, uh, I don't want that to be my, my channel. Um, <laughs> there are actually EFAP fans who've apparently watched this watch party and have concluded that Mueller and Fringy are totally correct. A conclusion that I can't understand how someone actually reaches unless they are operating under a truly bizarre premise that the factually accurate position in an argument is determined by whichever one is being put forth by the most aggressive and smug party. And that if you are put on the spot by someone who is arguing in demonstrably bad faith, that means that whatever position you hold must therefore be wrong. Because if you were right, then how could you lose an informal, lopsided debate? Because yeah. I'm not at my A game during this watch party. I was expecting to have a fun time introducing a couple of friends to something I thought they would enjoy. I was not expecting them to use this as an opportunity to talk down to me and make up a bunch of silly arguments that don't hold any water if you do any research that isn't possible to do in real time. It's a very cultish, might makes right way of thinking that's neither productive for actually having fruitful discussions on anything, really, nor is it particularly easy to talk a person out of, especially when they're hell-bent on believing that you are the enemy. And while debate bros who are at least consistent consistently correct tend to be generally insufferable and unpleasant, stupid debate bros become impossibly fascinating from a purely anthropological standpoint when someone dedicates the insurmountable amount of time that it takes to dissect their points and analyze the substance of their arguments, and looks deeper than just how confident they sound while making their arguments. I'm here to talk about a show that no one has seen, nor are any of these guys fans apparently willing to actually watch before deciding to die on the hill that EFAT made a bunch of absolutely airtight points about it. Look, they wanted someone willing to mount an argument 
that has nothing to do with their length or the one stream they did about Jenny Nicholson or the goofy politics of those they've chosen to associate with, and here I am. So, circling back to Gish Gallops, people are usually discouraged from responding to these things because of the sheer amount of time it would take to appropriately break them down. I'm built different, however. I revel in dissecting bad arguments, and a Gish Gallop just gives me more to break down. Because these kinds of remarks were now on the table for being lampooned, I called it for what it is. Victim blaming. Now, before we begin, it is worth remembering that at the very beginning of this saga, I tweeted out to people following me, do not harass them, do not pester them. I wanted to make it explicitly clear that I was not on board with anyone who was going to bother them about their take here. Now, feast your eyes on a fraction of the filth I've had to wade through for the last two years, as my reward for that. So, you respond to what you perceive as bad faith against a TV show, and then turn right around and imply that Mahler and Fringy are rape apologists. And you're really going to sit here and talk about bad faith? Yeah, I, I shouldn't have uh, have said that they were rape apologists. That was a horrible thing. Yeah, it kind of it kind of just defeats everything, mm -hmm. doesn't it? I mean, I, I honestly I'm... can't say that I believe you. Okay. Because you've lied before. You've lied several times. And I know that you're like the most terminally online person that I've ever met. So I don't really think I believe you. I think you're actually just that spiteful. You know, it, I, I think it's funny that you decided to open up your your huge diatribe with uh, or you didn't open it up with this, but you did put it in there. Something to the effect of, oh, my life, I don't have a whole lot going for me. But apparently you never thought about, um, you know, maybe not spending four months about <clears throat> complaining about us not liking a TV show. Grown-ass man whose whole thing was all about criticism, baby raging over his friends being rightfully criticized for victim-blaming a rape victim, refusing to hear me out, and taunting me for trying to open up emotionally. What a great guy, man. What a good guy you are. I'm sure EFAP's ever emotionally intelligent, rational, unbiased, good faith fans will be able to see through his blatantly cruel attitude on full display here. TLDR. Mahler and company were unreasonably harsh towards the show, so Southpaw got really upset and said some very unreasonable things about them on Twitter and Discord, including calling them rape apologists. This video is Wolf calling him out for being a liar and a backstabbing baby throwing a tantrum. Show me where exactly Southpaw called them rape apologists. He didn't. You can call somebody a rape apologist without saying those exact words. That's called an inference. That being said, I don't know whether Southpaw did or didn't do that. However, Hanlon's razor demands that I assume that if he never at any point did infer it, Wolf accidentally read it into something. Just stop. I have had enough. We have had enough. Your actions and accounts have been more than enough justification to prove you are untrustworthy. I don't hate you, nor am I angry. I'm disappointed. From that call between you and Wolf, what I noticed was frustration mixed with disappointment in his voice as he talked with you. That's telling. You had a chance to represent the fans of EFAP. You were pulled from the chat to defend a movie on the show. Mahler brought you into multiple podcasts and videos which garnered you attention and fame. You fawned over Mahler, attempted to emulate the podcast with, edit, South Podcast, and worked hard to be like them. Then they were uncharitable with your sacred cow. Your idol disliked something you care about deeply and made fun of it. Was it time to reflect on the criticisms and return with strong arguments with evidence for your case of it being good? Nope. You are right, they are wrong, and if they are wrong, you can't respect them. So, you got cheesed with Mahler and crew over a stupid show. You then went on a long, two-faced, attention-seeking rant through Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube, claiming you are both the victim of backstabbing, all the while backstabbing them at the same time. You give the toxic brood a bad name. You deal in bad faith and pedantic arguments. You side with those who dislike Mahler and retweet their slanders, all the while shielding yourself with the moral high ground of, hey, they did it to me first. You emulate all the traits of those you argued against not long ago. Your character arc is done. You have existed long enough to become the villain in this story. Go away now. 
Southpaw is completely justified and remains unrefuted. In acting like angry X, you know, instead of responding to Tone, you should consider if anything he actually said was correct or not. Who gives a fuck about this stupid TV show aside from SK fanbase? Southpaw being a drama queen is the issue. EFAP crew moved on in less than a month, and this schizo is still going like if they punched his mom and kidnapped his dog. Ah uh, yes, the you're just angry over a TV show argument. That's all the evidence needed to know that you have no idea what you're talking about over the matter. Keep seething. What have I got to seethe over? You're the one who has to deal with holding a bunch of gaslighting, victim-blaming pieces of shit as idols. Victim pot ain't gonna fuck you. Typical brain-dead response from another vacuous Mollerite. So you are just a tourist butthurt over that fucker LMAO. Uh-oh. Is somebody mad that I'm making a video going over why they lied about a piece of art? Don't get too excited. We wouldn't want you to have another stroke. I'm just saying that a lot of people sees your behavior as unhealthy, let's say. Typical low IQ response from the attention whore contrarian who threatened to off himself because people didn't like his crappy detective show. You literally believe that there aren't any good cops. Sit down and take your antidepressant pills. Fringy and Muller didn't like his sacred cow terriers and it broke his mind. He's basically been on a two-year descent into insanity, trying to explain away all of Muller and Fringy's critique, going as far as calling them rape apologists because a character's fiance drunkenly slept with her professor professor, and Southpaw has rationalized it as her being raped, despite no indication it was from the show. To try and invalidate the critique, I remember watching Southpaw and SK's The Real Story hit piece with some pretty neutral friends, and everyone came out of a significantly increased respect for Mahler and company. TLDR, Southpaw, the sacred cow slaughterhouse, is a giant cry bully pussy who can't take a minuscule fraction of what he dishes out and has decided to make it everyone else's problem because he's an enormous cunt. If the gloves weren't off already, they are now. And next time you want to cry and seethe about me or anyone who criticizes you arguing in bad faith, I suggest first looking in a fucking mirror. I've had quite the lovely experience of being accused by EFAP fans of claiming that EFAP are okay with rape for having referred to what they did here as victim blaming out of ignorance that this character was raped, which EFAP refuses to either take the L on or correct their fans for claiming that I had called them rape apologists, even though SK personally corrected them on this. It's as if they think that I am honestly the kind of person who would make such a heavy claim about someone I once considered a friend out of a vacuum, purely because they simply didn't like a TV show, as opposed to someone who could be genuinely appalled by this and willing to call it for what it is, no matter the backlash one may face for it. <laughs> Well, you think I this? As someone who knew someone who was taken advantage of in this manner at the time that I first heard EFAP make these comments while watching their stream live, and now knows a plurality of people who've told me about it after learning about this, this aspect of the show hits particularly close to home for me. And this is approximately where it stops being about EFAP just having no knowledge of the law or incredibly basic concepts like how inciting incidents or character arcs work or how framing works, and it becomes so much more significant. Because this is a way of thinking that leads to people actually getting seriously hurt. And it's a abundantly clear that almost everyone who's fought me on this has refused to seriously appreciate the gravity of this part of the discourse before then engaging in an argument about it, because to them, the egos of a few e-celebs matter more, and I'm sick of it. Just a sick world we're living in, sick people! Out of curiosity, do you think Hank could wield Mjolnir? <laughs> oh, this is a direct reference to something I had tweeted out a month before. Hey, uh, Mahler, do you see that dude right above Hank? Do you- <sighs> Do you think that, and the frame that I chose for Rick Mitchell, on top of the idea that any of these guys could actually be more worthy of lifting Mjolnir than Samwise Gamgee, that this tweet could have possibly been a joke? He's under oath. Some people are grossly unqualified to judge character writing. I've seen my character get completely assassinated by this crowd over lies, but I'm apparently just not allowed to fight back against them. The idea that this whole thing has helped open my eyes to just how bad the EFAP guys actually are at their jobs has been framed as indicative that I think Terriers is above scrutiny. But like, given the degree to which they were extremely hypocritical, dishonest, cruel, and thin-skinned, I'm sorry, but how exactly am I supposed to continue respecting these guys at all? You guys do realize that respect is earned, correct? You can lose it just as much as you can gain it. 
The EFAP community has repeatedly refused to argue why I am wrong about why Mahler's take on the show is bad, and instead opted to just make ad hominem arguments in order to discredit me whenever they're not just echo chambering my criticisms of EFAP out. Which comes across as though they seem to think EFAP are off limits to criticize, while then falsely asserting that I think Terriers is off limits to criticize. Don't tell me I can't say what I'm saying. Tell me why what I'm saying is wrong. I do not see what is so valuable about what these guys have to offer as critics. They not only consistently misread media, they even even seem to do it willfully, and then when you try to offer a good faith pushback, they will talk down to you in return. Then, after insisting that the reason you can't see what their problems are is because it must just be too close to your heart, and initially seeming to agree to disagree, they launch at the first opportunity that they get to shit on you by proxy publicly, and then, when you respond to them without even hitting them back, they get extremely defensive and act as if you were attacking them, reversing victim and offender. If they want to complain that I turned this disagreement over a TV show into a hostile one, all I have to say is that they have done that themselves. They like to argue in bad faith. It makes them happy, as well as the audience they've cultivated, which will eagerly declare anyone who doesn't participate in their morally and intellectually bankrupt circle jerks to be bad faith. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. At the end of the day, no matter how much they may try to project onto others, that's never going to change the fact that EFAP lied about someone's art and their fans let them get away with it. Good thing, too. You were this close to getting mad over a I personally would much rather have a tiny little channel where I can talk about whatever I'm passionate about, uninhibited by some need to tow a party line, lest I subject myself to the irrational rage of some lonely, hateful, and just plain cruel internet trolls who lack even a shred of integrity or compassion for anyone besides themselves, who make their own intellectual shortcomings everyone else's problem by throwing truly delusional tantrums about things you've never said. Now, I'd like to clarify that if you are a fan of EFAP who actually argues in good faith and will at least hold off on making vicious attacks like this until the other person has basically drawn first blood, what I'm about to say is not about you. It's about the second camp of EFAP fans I've just described. But this is largely for people who have been subjected to their animosity and cruelty. Because there's no way I could be the only person on Earth who has ever been targeted by them. And if you have been, I know how easy it is for all this animosity and cruelty to get to you. So I'm going to try to summarize it in a way that I really needed to hear a long time ago. EFAP's fans will often insist that what they are about is discussing media with each other. It seems to be the thing that's brought them all together because they all have a genuine passion for certain kinds of media. And for whatever reason, EFAP is what really resonated with them. However, there's a problem which becomes immediately apparent once they stop engaging with other viewpoints in good faith. This is not discourse. This is rage. This is the behavior of someone who has no real interest in putting in the effort that it takes to deserve being taken seriously, who's just resentful over their lack of whatever it is they desire in life, who has some perhaps deserved insecurities about their own intelligence, who need an outlet for their addiction to rage, who need a sense of belonging, and who feel the need to tear other people down in order to make them feel better about themselves. And they happen to have found all of those things in EFAP, which then makes any serious criticism of EFAP come across as a personal attack. Which is probably why I'm seeing so many people who are willing to, free of charge, make these insane defenses for EFAP that you couldn't pay me enough money in the world to make, even for someone who actually knows me, let alone some incompetent e-celeb I only have a parasocial relationship with. No one who is a slightly well-adjusted person, who is actually happy with their life lives acts in this manner. Some of them may be able to see the light one day, but as mentioned before, I've been at this for around two years now, and my energy in dealing with these people has been beyond expended. This video is really my last effort in trying to help people out of this cult that is just poisonous to not just their brains, but to their souls. And some people are going to just be too far gone to heed whatever advice I have to say and are beyond saving. And they really are going to waste away their existence making their own lack of emotional intelligence, or regular intelligence, everyone else's problem, and sending their money to grifters who don't really have anything worthwhile to say about art, but rather just take advantage of these suckers' addiction to rage. The next time that you start feeling like they're really getting to you, try to remember that their efforts to tear you down are really just a method of distracting themselves and others that deep down, they are just some of the most pitiful people in existence, and you're not really obligated to help them out of that. My own personal experiences with these people have taught me that you can't force them to stop being miserable and wanting to drag other people down with them. They need to actually want for themselves to know that they don't have to be this way. Now, regardless of which of these two camps you may fall into as a fan of Mahler and his podcast, one thing I feel confident in assuming is that, for you, it seemed utterly uncharacteristic of Mahler to get famous fast.
Um, in case anybody was curious, we ran uh, we we ran a policy, and it's been edited over time, as does with all policies. I think at first, when we started EFAB, it was like, welcome one and all, we will debate all. And then eventually it was like, actually, okay, we won't, we're not going to do it with people who have mental issues of any kind. You probably know what episode this was prompted really early on. But yeah. we realized like, oh shit, okay, no, the, we're going to avoid people that we think are a little unhinged. People that have like hyper bad faith, people are, uh, who are, there's a risk of something happening if they were to talk to us. So we, uh, we don't do that. We, and then um, it was like a year or two ago that we uh, had covered different people. We saw different things and we were like, oh, another one to add is if people are saying things about us with the deliberate intent of trying to talk to us, like that's their goal, then we're not going to entertain it. Like they, they have no other goal than to just try and get a step up the ladder or to try and just get to us to, you know, to say whatever. Yeah, um, some people are insanely bad faith and they only want to score points and try to get clips and stuff and they're not interested in really having a conversation. So those people aren't really good to have discussions with because there wouldn't be a discussion 